journey of the church and the journey of our lives. So this Mass tonight is quiet, reflective, but full of joy because we celebrate with the Lord. Yet to come is the suffering, the pain, the death, the glory. Almighty and loving Father, you have called us to share in this most sacred supper, in which Jesus, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to his church a new sacrifice for all eternity, this banquet of his love. Grant that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month, shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the land in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The land must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the land. The same night they shall eat of its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destruction will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Important other than the fact that one of the articles that was in there was actually 
a review of an Indian restaurant in Denver, Colorado by a local food critic named James Sheehan. In talking about his dining experience, he wrote how hard it was for him to adequately describe the delicious meal he had because, in his own words, it was hot and cool. It was spicy and refreshing all at the same time. So he concluded that in order to understand how good the food really was, you had to watch the food in action to see how it made people feel. Then he concluded, I've eaten at Little India three times in the last two weeks, and each time I keep my eyes on the crowd. Never once have I seen anyone seem unmoved by what's been put in front of them. In the faces of all of those around me, I see it all. I see the desire. I see the ecstasy. I see the bliss. I see the power of food to obliterate, to transport, to offer refuge for all things external. No one walks out the door without being touched, at least a little, least of all me. You know that, that line from that review that, that really stayed with me was when the author said that, that if we really want to understand exactly how good food is, then we have to watch that food in action. Each week, perhaps more so in non-COVID times, but certainly physically and electronically, each week we come together to gather at this table. We come here in all of our lovely, most wonderful moments. We also come here in all of our tough, challenging times as well. We come here and we may think that the music is extraordinary, and it is. We come here at Easter time and we say, the flowers are beautiful, and they are. The reader proclaims the scripture eloquently, absolutely. And maybe even the homilist once or twice may even say something that's interesting. Sometimes. All very important things. But again, it's that one line that has stayed with me all this time, that we need to watch the food in action. You see, that's really the meaning of the Eucharist. The power of this meal is whether you and I have been so moved by what is set before us that we put that meal into action. Perhaps not necessarily here, maybe not even out in the parking lot, but certainly more appropriately in our homes, in our socially distanced restaurants, grocery stores, in the office, at school, wherever we find ourselves every single day of our busy lives. The choices that we make the things that we say, the way that we live our lives in those places, reveal whether or not we have realized what Christ has really done for us. The sad news is that Jesus didn't leave us an instruction manual, but he was kind enough to leave us an example. And by that example, people will come to believe that Jesus is present here, and Jesus is present in the world by the way that we are present to them. No fancy words, no deep prayers, no astounding miracles. Our presence to others touches them with the very life of Jesus. And we do that when we offer others hope, when we offer them healing, 
and we offer them hands that are ready. Let's just take a moment to, to think of those three things. Hope, healing, and hands that are ready. Now, first of all, hope. In John's Gospel, John says that confused and worried disciples watched Jesus wash their feet. And now maybe reading something into that, I really believe that there must have been something very tender in the moment when he looked into their eyes. They probably remembered that look while he washed their feet, gazing at them, looking straight into their soul. They must have remembered that look for the rest of their lives. He was willing to wash the feet of people who would turn against him, who would run away, turn out to be cowards. But it was that look that said, you don't have to give in to panic. You don't have to give in to the fear. So every time we look into someone's eyes, even when their life seems to be an absolute mess, we are the ones that are giving them hope. We are the ones that are giving them Jesus. Healing, number two. When the time came for the Israelites to leave Egypt, way back in the book of Exodus, the Israelite people didn't just throw their coats on, grab their hat, and run out the door and hit the road running. The first thing that they did was they sat down and they ate a meal together. And as centuries went by, they would continue to eat that Passover meal so that they wouldn't forget that it was God who freed them. And by extension, freed all of us as well. Sure, Moses spoke and Moses challenged and Moses showed them the way. But it was God who healed their lives. We live in a culture that's fast-paced. People are always busy. But every time that we stop, every time that we listen, really listen to the worries of our children, to the needs of our spouse, to the troubles of a friend, or the challenges of a stranger, we help to heal them. We're giving them Jesus. Lastly, hands that are ready. I don't know if you've ever heard of Rafael Antonio Lozano. Anybody here ever heard of him? No, of course you haven't. But I'm going to tell you, in 1997, he legally changed his name to John Winter Smith. And from that point on, he simply went by the name Winter. John Winter Smith, starting in 1997, made it his life's goal to visit every single Starbucks in the world. And he actually got to the point where he had visited 4,000 of the 5,000 locations. Unfortunately for Winter, due to the increased popularity of Starbucks, the number of locations jumped to 32,000. <laughs> At last count, he was up somewhere slightly over 15,000 locations visited. Now for me, and I suspect for most of you, if not all of you, this falls into the category of, what's the point? <laughs> and it's certainly telling that Winter himself said, Every time I reach a Starbucks, I feel like I've accomplished something. When in reality, I've accomplished absolutely nothing. We come to this table. The world to bring about change all by ourselves. We are called to travel the world, to solve all of the proud problems of thousands of people. 
But what we are called to do is to effect change in one part at a time. So if we could make our hands ready to serve just one person, just that one person that we've neglected, just that one person that we've ignored, that one person that we failed to notice, then the food eaten here will have really touched us. And in the process, we will have accomplished not simply something, but we will have accomplished everything. Let us pray. Empowered by the grace of our Savior, we offer our petitions for this Eucharist. For a spirit of service, as Jesus washed the feet of his followers, may we too reach out to others who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, who, for those called to ministry within the church, may they be willing to put aside their own needs and be faithful servants to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, for members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals and all who risk their own lives, for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we celebrate the gift of Holy Eucharist. Inspire us to share with our brothers and sisters in acts of service. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. 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 Loving and merciful Father, grant that we may participate worthily in this mystery. For wherever this memorial is celebrated, the work of our redemption continues. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always in at his last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come this saving sacrifice, Jesus offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the perfect gift of praise, nourishing your faithful people by this sacrament. You make us holy, and we may be enlightened by one faith, 
and bound by the bond of charity. And so as we now approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, we pray that your grace may help us to pass over into the heavenly kingdom. Jesus is Lord, and we celebrate in song. On the night of his last supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. their grief and pain 
their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and march forward with them along the path to glory. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Welcome them now into the light of your face. Grant that when our earthly journey is complete, we may join them in glory, together with the blessed Mother of Jesus, Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints. There we shall praise you forever, through Jesus, your Son, through Him, and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. This evening, I would ask for those of you who are on this side of the church, the communion station will be in the back by the exit sign. If you'll leave the pew going towards the wall, go up and come around the second one back into the pew. Thank you.
The sacrament will now be taken to the tabernacle for time of repose. You're invited to stay for a few moments in quiet prayer. Uh, when you do leave the church, please do so in silence and refrain from speaking until you leave the building. Let us pray. Almighty Father, grant that as we are nourished and renewed by this sacrament, we may enjoy this banquet for all eternity. Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 